Hello, in this video I introduce the topic of international responsibility of the states for breaches of international law as well as the principles informing the current legal framework. This is the first video of six on the topic of international responsibility of states. The last two are authored by Professor William Chavas and focus on the Gambia versus Myanmar case, a case in which he is acting as lawyer for Myanmar. I will introduce the topic of international responsibility in this first video, the main principles governing the current legal framework, as well as its conceptual controls. In subsequent videos, I explain the rules of attribution for internationally wrongful acts, the circumstances that may concur as exculpatory despite the existence of a breach of international law and what remedies are due as a consequence of international responsibility. Let's start providing a preliminary definition of what we mean by international responsibility. Within the context of the sessions on this topic, international responsibility will refer to the legal framework that regulates what happens when a subject of international law, especially the state, breaches international law. International responsibility refers to the rights that are borne for those affected negatively by the breach as well as the obligations that are created for the wrongdoer. The definition we are using reflects the existing normative framework. This framework conceives rules on international responsibility as secondary rules, that is, as rules concerned with the consequences of breaching the so-called primary rules. Let's explain the difference. Primary rules are those that establish rights and obligations, for instance, the prohibition of smoking in a public space. Secondary rules are those setting out the consequences associated to the breach of that prohibition, for instance, a fine, as well as the processes for its implementation. This is a very simplistic distinction because in practice they are not that easy to distinguish but it is relevant for the purpose of international responsibility to understand the rules that are now considered general customary law on international responsibility and that they are confined to the consequences of an internationally wrongful act. This approach to international responsibility excludes other former approaches that have been tested in the process of codifying the rules governing responsibility of states and that included a mix of primary and secondary rules. This is the case of the rules relating to the treatment of aliens, protection of property abroad, or associated obligations of exhausting domestic remedies. The general principles governing international responsibility, as we are going to understand them here, are not concerned with how nationals of one country should be treated in another country, for instance. These rules will be set out in other primary rules by customary law, treaties or general principles of law. The rules on international responsibility will only regulate the consequences of breaches of these primary rules. The legal regime we are going to explore is the one reflecting general international law and what is considered customary law at the moment. We are not covering specific regimes established by treaties in specific areas. We are focusing on what international law is applicable to all states as customary law in the field of international responsibility. We will often refer to the work of the International Law Commission when addressing the topic of international responsibility. It is worth remembering that the International Law Commission is a subsidiary body, a daughter of the UN General Assembly. It is composed of international law experts representing the legal traditions of the world. The International Law Commission has the mandate to help the United Nations in developing and systematizing international law. While the 34 members of the Commission are experts and their work is not a source of international law beyond the subsidiary status granted to the most highly qualified publicists, 
their work has been commissioned by the governmental representatives that make up the UN General Assembly. The reports of international law commission are also submitted and discussed before the General Assembly. Therefore, it has a special weight in the development of international law and their reports are many times relevant as evidence of customary law. International responsibility and the question of legal personality in international law are intrinsically linked. We have already seen that who is and who is not an international subject in international law is linked on one hand to their capacity to bring claims for breaches of international rights at international level. On the other hand, legal personality in international law is also associated to the possibility of being accountable, responsible for international law violations. We have seen that the states are right holders and duty bearers to the greatest extent possible in international law. Therefore, they can both claim responsibility for the breaches of international law committed by another state and affected them, as well as being held responsible for breaches of international law. In the context of this course, we are focusing on the international responsibility of states and not the possible international responsibility of other non-state actors. I will nonetheless say a couple of things regarding responsibility of non-state actors for those who wish to explore the topic a bit further. And in any case, I want to emphasize that the topic of international responsibility does not end in the regime concerning state responsibility. First of all, remember that in the context of legal personality, we have seen that individuals can be responsible for breaches of international law known as international crimes, that is, crimes against humanity, genocide, war crimes, and the crime of aggression. It is clear from practice that international organizations can violate international law. Human rights violations that can be attributed to international organizations have been linked to UN peacekeeping operations, the World Bank, the World Trade Organization, or the United Nations Sanctions Committee of the Security Council. The World Trade Organization has been accused of violating labor and environmental standards. In 2016, for instance, the United Nations admitted responsibility for the outbreak of cholera in Haiti brought by members of UN peacekeeping operations. International organizations have been accused of breaching international law for doing nothing, for instance, in the context of genocide in Rwanda and in the former Yugoslavia, or for doing too much, for instance, in relation to the counterterrorism framework created by the UN Security Council. While the legal personality of international organizations has long been established, it has taken a long time before the idea of responsibility of international organizations has won enough ground. As a consequence, while the idea that international organizations are responsible for breaches of international law is currently undisputed, the codification of the rules regarding international responsibility of international organizations remains in its infancy. This can be attributed to the long time it took for the international community to realize that international organizations could be violators of international law. Already in the 1960s, there was a discussion about the need to codify rules to govern the responsibility of international organizations within the International Law Commission. In response, Roberto Ago, a prestigious scholar who was in charge of drafting the rules applicable to the international responsibility of states, questioned that it was possible that international organizations could violate international law. This belief delayed considerably the attempt to codify the rules on responsibility of international organizations. We have seen that for the topic of treaties, similar rules have been codified for states and for international organizations. The same has been attempted for the topic of international responsibility. We will explore in depth the articles drafted by the International Law Commission and their relevance in relation to the international responsibility of states. In 2011, 
the International Law Commission completed a similar draft for international organizations that mimics, that uh, emulates, that takes the same framework as the uh, articles drafted in relation to international responsibility of states. However, contrary to the articles drafted for state responsibility, the articles on responsibility of international organizations have not gained wide acceptance among states. A weakness of the regime regulating both responsibility of states and responsibility of international organizations is that no serious attempts have been made to articulate the legal regime governing shared responsibility. That is, when both states and international organizations may share responsibility for a wrongful act, something that is quite frequent, for instance, in the field of peacekeeping operation. This contributes further to the weakness of the rules governing responsibility of international organizations. The question of responsibility for internationally wrongful acts is often raised in relation to other non-state actors that, contrary to individuals or international organizations, don't have a wide recognized personality in international law. In fact, many efforts to push the development of international law towards recognizing legal personality to those non-state actors has as main objective making them accountable for international law breaches. We now turn our attention to the main subject of this session, international responsibility of states. The rules of general international law governing international responsibility of states are customary law. For decades, the International Law Commission has worked on codifying the rules on international responsibility with the objective of serving as a draft for a treaty on the subject. However, in 2001, states decided within the General Assembly of the United Nations that it was better to endorse the final drafts of articles submitted by the International Law Commission as a resolution of the General Assembly. Since then, the Articles on Responsibility for Internationally Wrongful Acts are considered the codified articulation of customary law in this area. Therefore, we will use them as such. Several features characterize the rules codified by the International Law Commission. First of all, the rules of international responsibility are conceived as secondary rules. I have already explained the meaning of this. The rules regulate what happens when there is a violation of international law. Therefore, they do not cover the possible existence of responsibility when damage exists, but it is not the consequence of a wrongful act. The Articles on Responsibility of States reinforce the principle of distinction between international law and domestic law in order to determine responsibility. The fact that the state has been forced to violate international law to comply with its domestic law is irrelevant in terms of international responsibility. What matters, again, is the existence of an internationally wrongful act, the breach of a rule of international law. And finally, the articles codify as a special category obligations arising under a peremptory norm of general international law, as well as the obligations owed towards the international community as a whole. These obligations are called obligations erga omnes. I have already explained peremptory norms of international law in the context of sources of international law, and we will also see that some obligations generate a standing claim for any state of the international community, even if they have not been directly injured by the relevant breach of international law. For what matters here, these articles codify an understanding of international law that is not merely based in horizontal relationships between sovereign states who are equal. Some rules limit that sovereignty, providing what we can call constitutional principles to the legal regime. And they provide some kind of hierarchy, some core principles that prevail over sovereignty of states or that 
other authors will say should are incorporated into the concept of sovereignty. We will see the specific international responsibility regime that arises from breaching these uh, erga omnes obligations or peremptory norms of international law. For now, just a reminder of some leading case law by the International Court of Justice touching upon these categories of obligations that are codified in the Articles on Responsibility of States for Internationally Wrongful Acts. Full references to the cases are provided in notes to these slides. <laughs>